Hey everybody, welcome back to Intro to Media Communication. Last week we talked about how we are integrally related to people that we don't know, usually, because of the way that things like industry, infrastructure, um, access, and the masses versus the ordinary. All of these ideas are ideas that I hope that you're starting to think through, whether that's how you relate to somebody in the Congo through your phone and the way it was made, or the way that we have the ability to speak to anyone anywhere, it seems, you know, with our communication technology, and yet, how many people in the Congo are you calling up and saying, hey, are you okay, how are things going? Obviously, there are variations in how we use things, how we understand things, and what we know about the world around us. So you might start to worry a little bit, and that's a good thing, that you don't know as much as you think you know because of the way that these things work. And we're going to continue in that vein, talking about a few new concepts this week. I look forward to getting to it. So as I said, we're going to be using this keywords book and in order to just think through all the crazy things that there are to talk about in this class, I want to do about five words per week. So it's on the syllabus. The first week I just needed you or wanted you to look at new media and text. Last week, you should have hopefully looked at access, industry, infrastructure, mass, and ordinary. And again, these are on the syllabus, so make sure you check that out. This week, I wanna talk about ideas like class, commodification, labor, power, and production. So it's not that these are really distinguishable sometimes because uh, somebody on the Ask Me Anything button, which I'm glad people are using, asked, you know, can you tell me what the difference is between industry and infrastructure? So I wanna get to that, but I also wanna uh, just address the idea that these are all connected, right? So you might be reading about something or reading a, or seeing something in the world and thinking that reminds me of access, and somebody else might be looking at the same thing and saying, that's totally an illustration of how industries work, and you may both be right. And so these things, these things connect. It would be cool if you could just read this whole book immediately and just understand how everything connects, but I know that's not likely. I mean, I couldn't do it. I'm sure you couldn't do it, uh, not easily. And so we're breaking things down basically five words at a time. And so we develop our vocabulary and we develop the way we, we do things in this class. So anyway, uh, getting back to these ideas, right? Access we saw comes very easily when it when you want to buy something. So I just had a moment after thinking about this class the other day where, you know, I'm driving through to get takeout. I give somebody my credit card and like within a second, funds are transferred. I get the food that I want. No questions, no nothing. I don't even have to say anything if I don't want to. I just hand the card over. They hand it back and it's $20 gone or whatever. Uh, so that is such simple and easy access, right? And that depends on so much around us that we take for granted, like in various industries, right? So you have, I mean, the plastics industry that make the actual card, but you also have the banking industry, the financial industry, all of these different sectors of, in most cases, the economy, but also of society. And it gets complicated, but because of all these things, we don't need to think about it, right? We just give our piece of plastic and then we know our bank account will have $20 less in it, but that's okay because we authorize it. Uh, and then, yeah, there's policing and then there's um, education, which in some cases allows us to spend more or make more or whatever. And the infrastructure are, I mean, it gets complicated, as I said, and I hope you keep referring to this, but the industries are the different sectors that work to provide people with these things in some cases that's sort of jobs, in other cases it's resources, or sometimes they take resources and jobs, it can vary and it's never as straightforward as we would like it. The infrastructure are those things that are in place that allow us to, for example, give a card and receive some food. And this infrastructure is dependent on the industry and the industry is dependent on the infrastructure. So it was a good question, that whoever it was that raised it, because you can't really t have one without the other but they kind of emphasize different things, right? So the people working to make things happen, like the automobile industry, like we looked at with Ford, completely changed the way things work and the way that most mass industries work where you're making products because of the Ford model. 
that was an excellent thing in Detroit in the 20s and 30s and 40s and so on because it allowed people without a lot of technical skills to make cars by doing one little bit together, drove down the prices of these things, allowed people to buy them, arguably created a middle class. At the same time, anybody want to live in Detroit this year? For the most part, that industry has completely crashed in America, and there are a number of reasons for that, right? There are competing industries, so um, electronic cars, you could say, or maybe um, other forms of transportation, but also competing industries in different countries where laws are different, and so if you can make things cheaper in another country, then maybe you will, which is, again, why a lot of your phones are not made in the U.S., even though they might have been designed in the US and those are two very different things. I don't want to get too much into that stuff but hopefully this just allows you to start thinking about things and I want to continue with that and think about class which in most cases refers to when we're talking about it in this sense refers to the money you make on a simple level but more importantly your relation to production and so if you own a factory, it's, this, this is a classic sense, and it's changed since industrialization, but yeah, on the basic level, if you own a factory and you pay people to make stuff, then your relation to production and your income is going to be very different than if you own nothing and are desperate for food and are therefore willing to sell your body in terms of you know what you can do for eight hours or ten hours a day, your mind in many cases, and both, right? So... Instead of saying, like, I'm going to do whatever I want to do for 8, 10 hours every day, I'll do whatever you want me to do for 8, 10 hours a day, which is often, you know, making phones or digging uh, coal tan out of the ground or whatever the case is. And you make that trade-off usually because the incentive to eat, to have housing is important to you, obviously, and you don't have alternatives. And so the fewer alternatives, like we saw with the Foxconn workers, the more likely you are to take a bad bargain, which is what we would see, I think a lot of us um, who are maybe seeing ourselves as middle-class Americans would not want to work at Foxconn. It seems ridiculous to us that anyone would, but again, we're in a different situation, right? So maybe you're thinking, I wouldn't work for any less than this amount uh, per year, but that's all relative to the industries that are available, the infrastructures that allow you to get things like healthcare, food and resources, education, you know, if these things are readily available, then maybe you are not so worried about making a bad trade and you can spend time learning, developing skills that are, you know, more difficult to find and therefore charging more for your time and services. This is all related through media because, again, where you used to be able to, you know, walk down the street and say, hey, shoemaker, you made shoes today, I need shoes, let's make a trade. Now you can do that with people hundreds of miles away. And that significantly affects how we interact with people, right? So that's one of the main things I want you to think about, as well as commodification. So commodification happens when you turn something into a commodity, right? That seems simple. But I want to think about how that works and how it's represented and how it's produced and the power relations involved in that, right? One of the examples I have here for you to look at is uh, just an iPhone commercial. You can literally take any iPhone commercial since they've been made but I've chosen one that's more recent. And I want you to think about what we see and what we don't see here, right? I think what most of us find sort of, you know, obvious is that you should treat your phone with care. You should make sure that you have a good relationship with your phone, meaning that you're not overly using it, but that you are updating it whenever you need to. The more you start thinking about this, though, the more it starts sounding like a human-to-human -human relationship, right? I bet you if your phone fell and broke, you would cry about it maybe, um, maybe mourn it to an extent. You would definitely get very worried if you didn't know where it was. Like these are all relationships that people used to only have with other humans. That's one of the ways that commodification has changed the way we think about things. I don't emphasize it because it's not uh, in the book specifically as an as a entry, but commodity fetishism is a particular way of thinking about commodities where, yeah, you fetishize, but what that means is you replace human interactions or what would normally be human interactions with um, object interactions. So, again, you, maybe you care about your mother and you want to make sure she's okay. And if she fell down and broke her leg, you would worry about her and try to help her. 
And a lot of those things you now do, maybe still hopefully with your mother, but also with your phone or computer or whatever, right? That tells us that things are changing in, in significant ways if you, if you take a step back and think about how we used to act as humans and how we now act based on the media around us. Another thing I want to think about, one of the last things today, is how media is two things always, right? It relates to content. So I read in this newspaper that this is going on, or I watched this film that had this thing happening, right? So what's going on in the newspaper or the film, that's content. And that's important. And then the other thing, the thing that we're emphasizing more in this class, because it's usually not emphasized, is the form of media, right? So a newspaper is different than a film, because a film gives you visual and audio cues, and if you're pausing it, then it, and you can stop and go, but usually a film is straight through, right? Whereas a newspaper, if you we're talking old school, where you physically get one, then you're reading it, and as soon as you stop reading it, the newspaper stops making any sense, right? It's not like you can walk away and the film's gone by for five minutes, the newspaper hasn't done anything for five minutes, it's still the same, right? And those represent different forms of communication, and I want you to think a lot about, throughout the year, throughout this term, about how the form of media makes us understand, or forget about sometimes, other things. Maybe that's content, you know, so it's easier to show sports through things like TV than it is through maybe other forms like, you know, old school smoke signals, messenger pigeons, like you can't really get a good sense of how the NFL game is going, but television lets you know a lot. Newspapers allow you to analyze a little bit more, maybe like the plays that were made because they're separated as opposed to live. All of these allow us to do certain things and then may sometimes not do certain things. One of those things is think about where our products are coming from, how we relate to other people, and that relates to how the world works, right? If we didn't have the ability to communicate with people through digital means and through phones and through earlier telegrams and things like that, we would not have a global economy the way that we do. And if we didn't have a global, global economy the way that we do, we would not have things like phones and internet, at least the way that we have them now, because those two kind of go together, right? We move in a certain direction, which also pushes us in a certain direction. And I want you just to think about your own position and other people's positions through the examples I put out on the website and through the terminology that you're starting to learn. Again, feel free to send questions. You can send them to me or you can send them through the Ask Me Anything, which goes to me, but it's anonymous. And I want you every week to think about, you know, five new concepts, how they relate to things and how you relate to those things as well. I think what you'll find is, yeah, things are obviously much more complicated than you might have first thought, but then also why? Why are you having so much access to one thing and little to no access to other things, right? Who appears in these iPhone commercials and who doesn't appear in these iPhone commercials and why is that so significant? Especially when you think about terms like class, labor, power, these kinds of things, right? Lots to think about. The only other thing I'll say is I want to start talking, and we'll do more throughout the week, so it's not like this is the week, but I want to start talking about Mr. Miracle because, again, if we have this common text that we use, this common representation in both form, which is a comic book, but also in terms of content, so hopefully you understand some of the basics. I think it's an interesting and compelling work. It's an Eisner Award-winning uh, comic series, but you'll start to see how maybe things are going on in his life or you can relate in certain ways that he's being represented that relates to some of these terms. And I think that because we have that shared thing, the comic book, we can talk about that in more detail, right? Whereas if you were saying, this reminds me of my uncle who's blah, 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 then, you know, I don't know your uncle. And so it's hard to relate or hard to understand what you mean by those connections, right? Whereas we all have this book now, you should be finishing it if you haven't already. And that way we can have, especially if we get back in person, talking to each other, conversations where we all know, oh yeah, when that happened in the book, that's exactly how power functions according to the keywords definition because X, Y, Z, right? And we can all stay on board. So I've asked a few questions about that. I hope you're enjoying what you're learning. I hope it goes in that nice spot where it's not so comfortable that you already know all this and, you know, why are you even taking this class? But it's not so foreign and scary that you're like, I have no idea what's happening, right? You want to be in that sweet spot where it's a little uncomfortable because maybe some of these things you hadn't thought about or you hadn't thought about in that way, but it also feels like you are actually gaining a little bit more knowledge and power 
at least that's my goal in the class. If you think I can do it in a better way or there's alternatives that you would like to see, make sure you let me know in feedback. Look forward to hearing from you guys soon. Cheers.